an algorithm was mostly about stuff that I did on my own time, though there are some bits that my awesome company, Igalia, let me do on work time, and that was pretty cool. Um, so, uh, Cheryl just before was saying that uh, like they want to show uh, young girls that technology and science on probably free software is something cool. Um, I'm going to try to explain that. Um, so, uh, it's about hacking the real world, that means trying to do things on, uh, in that big room with the blue ceiling, you know, outside. You have a picture of it here, the room. Um, most specifically, I'm going to talk about a project that I did this summer, uh, which was to try to take pictures from above using a nice little balloon like that attached to a string with a camera up here. So, more specifically, um, that was the main idea of the project. So, having a balloon, a camera, a string, uh, we did that at a kind of hippie artsy festival called Nowhere, it's very cool. Uh, so you have CPs, you have some artistic stuff, a lot of tents. And we, we thought, yeah, we're gonna try put a balloon up, take, take pictures for the whole week of the, of the event, and uh, try to do the things with that. Uh, high, uh, most exactly, that was like the string was 100 meters high. No, no, that's the other button. Sorry. So that's what I call a very low orbit satellite. Um, why, why I call it that way? Simply because you have uh, when the balloon is up. Um, well, it's not, it's not like the, this project of trying to take pictures of the stratosphere or something like that. So the balloon stayed at 100 meters high and didn't go higher. Uh, we didn't cut the string. Uh, but still you have your balloon, your camera, whatever system you put that stay there uh, for a few hours and you cannot access them directly. So one of the problems with that is how do you press the button of the camera? How do you take pictures? Um, for that project, obviously, we were, we were on a budget. We had uh, some financing from uh, the Nowhere um, Arts Committee or whatever it was called. Um, but we still had to add some from our pockets, so we were generally going the cheap options. So we had a uh, second hand uh, Canon compact camera. And with that, uh, you can use a project called CHDK, so first free software project I'm going to talk about. Um, because in, the, in that project we used a lot of free software project and our presentation here. And I kind of thank you to the community because without free software this wouldn't have been possible. So the Canon Hack Development Kit is basically um, a firmware addition, it's not a separate firmware, but you can install most compact Canon cameras. And uh, using that, uh, you can do funny things like script your camera in Lua or script your camera in Basic if you're a bit crazy. <laughs> and so, uh, um, yeah, so we programmed the camera with that to take a picture every minute while it was up and it worked. Um, so then the second issue is like monitoring, like. In this work, but how do you know when the balloon is up? Is it working? Is it taking a picture? Has it say faulted or something? Okay. So we we thought of doing some electronics, playing with uh, an Arduino board, having an FM emitter attached to it, have it uh, check on the camera via a USB shield for Arduino. So I think you stick to your Arduino on. And uh, that would plug via USB to the to the camera. And 
Yeah, I got to the point where I could emit beats. I could even emit like kind of uh, uncoded signals in like a modern style, and uh, I managed to almost decode them uh, using new new radio. Uh, and yeah, that was cool. Only then I had to still put the USB in, connect the thing to the USB to the camera. Um, it was like already probably April or May, and um, the event was at the start of July, and we still didn't have a balloon or a lot of logistics things that we had to handle, and so we basically gave up and went with no monitoring. Mm -hmm. Ooh, scary. <laughs> that wasn't the problem yet. So, another program is with a picture every minute. The idea was to make a time lapse. Here's an example of a time lapse taken at nowhere uh, as well, like another project uh, from Mountain Solar of Salad, this is him, the, the guy who installed that. That was pretty cool. Uh, anyway, not the subject of this talk. And um, so, what do you do at time lapse? How do you create a video from other pictures? That's simple. You use GStreamer. Um, so basically, there's an element called multi-file SRC, and you can give it J JPEGs, and from that, it gives you a video stream, and you can encode it and everything. So it was just a relatively simple GStreamer pipeline with GS technology, uh, like no coding involved, basically. It was rather easy, so kudos to GStreamer. And then there was another problem. Uh, things were a bit like draw the people here. Uh, it, you can see that the image is not very stable. It's moving. That that video was taken from a boat. Uh, can show it again, maybe. Ooh, Joe. Um, and. Uh, so um, yeah, with, with a camera from Balloon, I had we had similar difficulties of shaking it, but even worse because you have a balloon, it's in some position. You take a picture one minute later, when you take the second picture, the camera is gonna rotate around the screen, the balloon is gonna move with the wind some other position. So two consecutive frames in your videos are gonna be very different. Um, you end up with a video that's just pure, pure flickering. Uh, I can show example. That's like one frame. That's the next frame. So as you can see, there's like a huge rotation between the two, and uh, that's not cool in the video. So to try to tackle that, I use OpenCV. OpenCV has plenty of nice tools. Uh, that helped me to like see what what is the the movement from one frame to another, on basically apply the reverse movement, the reverse matrix, so that one frame maps the previous frames uh, as if more or less it was taken from the same position. And OpenCV was cool as well to. Sorry. Uh, as you can see, you have big black borders on the pictures. Uh, well, actually, this, well, they were, I think that's the after, but the original are really huge. Like, basically, the picture was around uh, a in a circle, and um, the rest was black. Uh, so, with OpenCV, you can also, like, revert, uh, like, map your round image onto something that's more squarish. And so I wrote a, a GStreamer element using OpenCV that stabilizing. You can see a demo of it. So that's the video before, and that's after once stabilized. So Joe is much more peaceful. He doesn't have like stomach issues or anything like that. And that's what the final result looks like so far. I'm still thinking of improvements, like getting rid of that. Orange code uh, that should be possible with OpenCV just needs some work. And 
Yeah, that's what it looks like. So you, if you look carefully, you can see a van going on. You can see people on yeah, the end of the video. Is, there, there's a bug somewhere. <laughs> But yeah, that's the idea. I find it pretty cool already. Do we have... Okay. I have like five minutes if some people have questions <laughs> about details or the details or things. Where's yeah. the hippies? Hmm? Where's the hippies? Uh, you can see... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can see like these points are like people going around. Like here you can see a group that was scattering. There are some people, uh, uh, yeah, you can <laughs> try to spot them, like, these dark uh, points are, are like hippies, <laughs> like, like in the first picture. They're, yeah, they're quite small from 100 meters high. Yes? <laughs> Is there a limitation in gates? Um, well, there are several aspects to that, uh, like, for their ring, you are um we our limitation the reason why we had a uh, hundred we were a hundred meters high is basically because we have a string of a hundred meters <laughs> <laughs> we probably could have gone higher only when well, you have more strings to roll on and roll when you want to get the value down or up um because sometimes you have to do it uh, because the balloon didn't a balloon like that doesn't like wind too much. So if it gets windy, um, like decently windy, I don't know, like not not that much actually, like from 15, 20, yeah, 15 kilometers hour per hour of wind is already gonna put you in trouble. So like on the evening of the first night, there was like a crazy wind on. We were like partying at another cor in another corner of the festival, on, and then it was like too crazy. And, oh, I forgot. I think I had another slide here. The thanks of my company, these people, and all the people who helped. And yeah, I didn't name him, but we were there were two of us. Uh, I was with uh, a guy called Udo Ribbony, who was actually the real mastermind behind the project. Other questions? Yes? Did we consider installing a parachute in case the battle blew up? Did we consider installing a parachute? Uh, we did consider it at some point and quickly discarded it because like everything we didn't have the time, it didn't seem like that much of a priority. Um, we were trusting the rope basically. It was some good like kite rope in I don't remember the name of the material. But it, it could theoretically support like a hundred kilos and the pool we measured from our balloon was like maybe two kilos and uh, with like very big winds it could maybe reach ten kilos or something like that but we were far below the limits uh, even though at some point when we attached the balloon we didn't really know how to do this and we like almost lost it <laughs> but we didn't uh, yes. When when the balloon was up, there were two ki two still two kilos of pull in the rope. Um, was well, there still two kilos of uh, pull on the rope when the balloon was well, up uh, with the load? I guess you mean. Um, but I don't remember what the well the total pull uh, empty was more than two kilos. I think it was more like three or four. Then we had a load of around one kilo, so it was yeah, around two or three three kilos, I think. That means you can get two kilos of rope higher. Yeah, we could we could have got two two kilos of rope higher, yeah, indeed. But the rope, yeah, the rope actually was rather light. I think these are hundred meters were probably I don't remember how much, but like less than 100, than 100 grams for real in that order of magnitude. That's pretty nice. Yes? Uh, yes.
did I have to do other changes to the software? Uh, so not really. I, like I wrote that element that uses OpenCV. Actually, it's like I think less than 500 lines of Python, and um, yeah, just using Python bindings of OpenCV. And no, I didn't. Like I didn't have that bugs or I think my time is up. So. Thank you all. Um, if you have more questions, don't hesitate to offer me a beer or I'll just find me every around here or just in the corridor. Thank you.